All right, Mike, are we excited to talk a little bit about local schema today? Yep, we've, uh, I've built, we've built a, uh, a plugin for local businesses to cover pretty much all their local schema needs, I think. Um, you know, all, has all the essentials in one place and then all the things that are other options that they could, um, that they could want are all easy to access, easy to edit. And yeah, I think we're, think we're on to something here, but hopefully the, uh, hopefully people also think so. Well, so, let's take it for a little test drive. Why don't we show them what we're talking about? Yeah, sounds good. Show them on the right screen. How's that? You see my screen? Yes, I can. Good, thank you. Sure, uh, the one that says local scanner, yes? Yes. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> All right, so this is it. Um, I've filled in some, basic information uh, on here, just so that, because no one wants to see people filling out forms live. Uh, so we have all the essential things, and this is this is essential based on what uh, Google says is essential. So, that, so just on this page here, this will make sure that you don't have any, uh, any errors when you try and go to the rich results. So that's all that covered in there. And then, under the details tab is pretty much all the other stuff that you would need for the business. Things like opening hours, logo, the maps and coordinates. We have two different types of area served, either the geo circle style, where you set your midpoint and say, right, we save everyone in this radius, or you can have the administrative area where you can put in city, country, state, whatever. Business description, same as all those sort of things. And then down here we have the name of services, which goes into the has offer catalog. So if the if the business has services, then this is kind of the, the header for all the offer catalog and brings in all their services. Uh, and then we also implement uh, article schema if they would like. So on the posts, we'll do the article schema, and then they can choose between having the uh, author profile or the organization as the uh, as the author of the article schema and it also brings in things like publish show that sort of thing so that's on those details and then we also have the review which will by default it will just go to the home page if people want it everywhere they have that option it's not uh, I'm not recommending that, um, but we can have we can have different reviews on different pages as we so choose. So, uh, so that's it for the for the entering the information. Any questions? Yeah, can we go back to essentials a little bit, please? Sure. So here, let's kind of go through the business types, if you would. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So. Uh, a lot of schema plugins, they either have only a couple of options or they literally dump everything into one single uh, drop down. So what we've done is separated it out. So you know, these, are the, these are the head categories. So let's say automotive business. And then over here, you get into the subcategories. So whatever it is that is in this final one here, that's going to be what's taken, so auto parts store. Um, but that way, instead of having to scroll forever and try and figure out where it might be, you go, all right, you know, it's it's kind of a home and construction business, all right, cool. And then it'll either go just to the to that, or you know, you can have a look and see if there's anything, yeah, any sub business types uh, in there. And then, you know, as as the schema gets updated with more options, obviously this will this will become more comprehensive, but that's that's the current state. That's all the all the business types taken from schema.org currently. Okay, so we have basically primary headings and secondary headings, specific headings. Mm -hmm. And then after that, they would put in their business name. They would put yep. in um, what's business at ID. So the at ID, uh, most people aren't aren't going to aren't going to touch this. It's um, it's something for I guess the more power users, if they're if they're wanting to refer back to this specific um, business, either on internal pages or whatever, 
Um, the at ID means so that they can uh, they can just reference the ID, and we do that actually in the article scanner. You can just reference the ID, and then it pulls all the information in um, automatically. So that has to be yeah. Um, okay. Most like people aren't going to need to worry about it, but um, by default, it is just the URL, and most people can just leave it that way. And if you know what it is, then you yeah you'll be able to manipulate it accordingly um, and if you don't know what it is don't even worry about it okay so now you mentioned a couple of things there there you said that um this is basically what 90 percent of what every business owner needs for schema every website to make mm -hmm. it easy for the average maybe the below average person to go in and just be able to have proper schema on their website and then you mentioned advanced users so let's say someone's an advanced schema user Mm -hmm. what, um, does this restrict them? Does this hold them back? If someone really knows schema, can they use this as an augmentation? Can they edit some different things, customize it? How does someone that really understands schema going to use this and use it to its full potential? Yeah, so everything that's here is editable um, and anything that's not editable isn't here, basically. But uh, so some people, they may have the uh, particular ways of doing schema that they prefer to the way that we've done it here. And uh, so I've built in some hooks. So before, uh, so this essentially sits as an array and then our user can come in, manipulate that array however they want, um, you know, PHP array, um, and they can, they can edit it, add their own stuff by custom code before it gets output. So, um, so it, it will do 90, 95% of what um, even the power users are going to need, but if they need that extra five percent, that's all. That's all easier to to edit and manipulate, so that they can add all that in as well. Okay, and I saw something you mentioned there on the details page about services. Now I've heard different people talk about local business schema and service schema. Can you kind of differentiate that and can do, say why would you have one or the other or both combined? Yeah, so the easiest way is if I pull up the, so this is a, a page that I have edited the find where the schema is, and I'll put it into rich snippet testing tool. So while that's doing that, so there's, there's people that say that you know you should start with on these service pages that you should start with the service schema uh, and then add in the business either as the brand or the owner or something like that uh, the provider of the service um, which is one way of doing that and i went through and coded coded the service pages accordingly you know that makes sense uh, you want to get it as close to the close to the page as possible. However, doing that, uh, it became very obvious that if we want this to work for Google, which is what a lot of people, that's the main reason that they're doing this, um, it's not actually going to work because Google doesn't recognize service schema in its own right. So the way to add your service schema in is to start with the local business, standard local business schema, and then add in the uh, adding the services under the offer catalog. So if we have a look how that actually works here, we have the, we have the local business schema, all the details in there, and then um, this is where the services come in. So we have has offer catalog, and then the name is what we covered in that details page. We've got currently cleaning services, and then the services get brought in as items under the item list so that that's the that's the correct way um then yeah so it's kind of like making a cake if you don't follow the instructions that google wants with business and then and then services it's going to throw it in a maybe a tail spinner has problems with validating things yeah google just doesn't recognize it it'll, it'll just ignore the schema it says that there's there's no schema on the page which that was annoying and a day spent coding differently, but um, 
at least we have a conclusive answer to that. And then as a result of that, I dug into um, Google's documentation and it, yeah, that's, it, it was very clear that it doesn't cover service schema in its own right. Okay. Now let's talk about some things that I've heard a lot about schema. Um, a couple issues that people um, I think are on both sides of the fence with this. Is there an issue with having local business schema on every page? Issue with having local business schema on every page. Okay, so the controversy around that is people people say that uh, I've heard people say that it's wrong to do it on every single page. That you should only put local business schema on the home page, maybe the about page, and the contact page. Uh, that's one way of interpreting it. Um, from all my digging, what that comes down to, because they say that it's wrong, which you know doesn't schema doesn't really make those prescriptions. Um, so it's come from somewhere else. The only thing I could draw, or the only thing I could find that maybe pointed to that and the shift, 2019 John Mueller, who's the new Mac cuts for those of us who've been in SEO for a while. Uh, John Mueller said um, that it's not necessary to put. Uh, local schema on every page and that it's not recommended um, to put the review like you've, you've made a distinction between putting the review schema on uh, on every page the same review you know in an attempt to manipulate the stars and that sort of thing which is fun um, but as to the local business schema itself all he said was that you don't need to do it but like the way that the way that pretty much every local business does their does their business, they have the name, address, and uh, name, address, and phone number, the NAP, in the footer of every single page, and the local business schema is essentially that. Like before before we had Jason, we used to just mark up the name, address, and phone number, and add some social stuff or whatever in the uh, like hard coded in the HTML in the footer. I don't see any difference between those two. So, um, so the people that say that it's wrong or that it's going to hurt your site to put local business schema on every single page. I mean, I, I've had it on every single page on big sites for years and had no issues whatsoever. So um, I, think, I think they're misinterpreting a it's not needed um, necessarily you know, for don't do it, which I think that's a uh, mischaracterization of the reality. There wouldn't be at any time that maybe a representative from Google ever said something maybe with their fingers crossed behind their back, would there? Yeah, true. But in this case, he was just being, he was just being ambiguous yeah. on this specific thing. Um, and I think people have just kind of read the, read the whole thing where he says, don't do review schema on every page in order to manipulate the rankings. So that was the, the whole thing. That was what he was saying not to do. And then they've just taken that and applied it to business schema in general, which that, that, that wasn't what he intended. Um, and uh, that's not what he said. And that's not how the reality of schema is. It's not the reality of how schema works. Okay, so we've looked at the, the schema as a whole, the local business with the detail and reviews. Um, what about like ser pages, service pages, schema on that or location pages? Do we have something that where they can adjust some of that page by page? Yep, we have that. Um, before we get to that, there's uh, one other, I mean, license. There's one other tab that I wanted to get to. So Please. here in the code tab, we have the output. So the schema that gets outputted to, uh, to the home page. So everything, everything from there, all, all that schema. So if you want to send it to your client or you just want to test it um, either in a local environment or somehow, uh, you can come over here, paste your entire schema in and just check to make sure that you, know, you haven't you haven't misspelled something or whatever. Keep it keep it very easy. Make sure that everything is all valid. Um, or you know, if you want it broken out so that you can read it easily, everything that goes to the home page uh, is going to be in here. 
Nice. All right. So individual pages. So we have a few things on there. So we spoke about the service schema before. Uh, the, the only stuff that kind of is really relevant for this. Um, you know, you could probably add more stuff in here, but um, you know, we're already bringing in the local business schema on these service pages anyway. So um, yeah, the, these are the these are the ones that are important. So we got the name of the service. Um, it's good to have the same as. It's not required, but it's good to have in. Um, and then the short description. The only thing that's actually required um, is the is the name, because otherwise why have you got a service there? Um, then we also have down here. So this, you can have a review that's specific to this page. So even if you have review everywhere, uh, so the that main review, even if that is set to display everywhere, this will overwrite that. Uh, but most of the time, you're probably not going to have it everywhere. So this will just add in the specific review, which, you know, you want, like if you've got this review on the particular page, uh, it's good to uh, it's good to put it into the schema and then you can get the stars and everything. It'll bring in the aggregate rating and uh, the rating system. So out of five or 10, whatever that you've already got set. But yeah, so that's, so you can add in your specific review there. Uh, and then the last one that we've got is this multi-location. So if you have a business that's got a lot of uh, locations or you know, um, you service, if you have a page for, I don't know, Phoenix, and then you have a page for Scottsdale, et cetera, uh, you know, you could use this as, you know, business, Phoenix business, Scottsdale. And then on, say, this is the Phoenix page, you know, you would put, And it's in there, so name, and then you can add in your geo coordinates, telephone number, uh, the image, which would be the shop front, uh, for example, or, or something obvious about thing. Then you can change the address in here. So this, this, what was already in here is automatically brought in from the parent. So say you have the same street address for the business, but it's in a different um, geo location. Maybe that's your main office address and all your mail goes to there, then do that. Uh, but you have that option to have multi location schema brought in. Okay. Now, I remember you saying something with the services and a catalog versus a single service. Yeah, so uh, the way that it currently works, um, we have a single service on a single page. Um, I, uh, intending on adding in the ability to do multiple services on this page. Haven't just added, haven't built that one in yet. Um, if that's uh, probably end up building it at some stage, uh, but for now, this individual service to an individual page, which then each service gets brought into the offer catalog. Um, and so, yeah, so on all the pages where the business schema is it then will link across in the schema to each of the services through the has offer catalog. Okay. Okay. So it looks like we've put about thrown everything into here from a schema standpoint, including the kitchen. Let's have article schema. Oh, let's talk about article schema. So on these posts, let's have a look. So this one here. Oops. Let's just grab the script real quick so that it's easier to talk about when you can see what is going on. So let's just double back here to the settings that we had on details. We've turned on article schema and we're using the user profile as the author. So then over here we have article schema. And it's got headline, date published, the image, which uh, this one automatically brings in the featured image. Um, we'll, we'll see how, how that works for people. Um, we, may, we may add in the ability to 
customize that particular image, but for now it's on the featured image. Uh, and you'll notice it doesn't match the website. That's because I'm literally overriding it for this particular uh, demonstration um, that it's not going to display my um, website image on <laughs> everyone. So then we have the author, this person, and then it comes under works for, and then let me see if I can make this big enough. So this is where I was talking about before with the ID. So works for literally just has the local business and then has the ID and name. And then because under publisher, we have the local business with the same ID, we can just reference the ID and then it pulls in all the information. So I'll show you how that works. And so it works for the schema then recognizes that all this information applies to the local business, even though we don't have to put it in specifically. And then it comes to the publisher. So works for has all that already brought in, even though it's only online. And then schema, the schema also recognizes the publisher ID. And then this is where the um, local business schema is all brought in. So we have both, uh, both the, a, a filtering issue that'll be fixed before it goes live. Um, thought I'd caught that bug, it's all good. Um, so we have the author as a person, uh, works for, and then publisher. And then if we were to change that to the organization as the author, which is also rather than in schema. Let's put a copy of that one. So instead of having works for, for example, the author will just be the business. So that author, and then it brings in all the business schema and then publisher brings in all the schema. So article works as, uh, as it should. So we have article schema for the posts, which is optional, you can turn that off. Um, and we have service schema on the service pages. And then we have local business schema so here on the homepage. Good. Is there anything else we need to show them on this? Or will we share just about everything from a sh sharing screen? Yep, I think that's about it from the sharing screen. Okay. So basically you have um, a lot of people that don't understand schema, maybe need some help with schema. This is going to help all of them be able to have efficient schema on there. For people that think they need to throw the kitchen sink at it, they can throw the sink at it to their um, end can, until their heart's content, content, until their heart's yep. content, and they can do whatever they want with it. So, who couldn't use, or wouldn't use, or shouldn't use this plugin, Mike? I don't know. I've tried to make it as comprehensive for local businesses. I mean, if you're a, if you're not a local business, then you know this isn't this isn't designed for you say you're a i don't know a, a news organization or something like that but if you fall under the umbrella of a of a local business uh, you know whether you're a multinational local business but if you if you can use local business schema then this should pretty much cover you awesome well mike thanks for sharing this let's see what people think about it and we'll be ready to roll this out coming to a city near you any day. Awesome. Thanks, Mike.